Hello and welcome to Watchdog Wargaming. Tonight I shall be reviewing the new Warlord Games Bolt Action British and Canadian Army Infantry box set for 1943 to 1945. So it's 30 hard plastic 28mm multi pose miniatures in new sculpts and uh, these will be suitable for uh, mid to late war. Okay, so here we go. So this is uh, arrived in the post today. So if, uh, let's open it up and uh, have a quick, in fact, let's have a quick look at the box. So uh, very useful straight away. They've actually got a suggested paint guide on the back uh, and a little bit of blurb about the British and Canadian infantry from 1943 to 1945. And, uh, and, and a bit of information on there as well. So equip equipment included Lee Enfield number no. four rifle, Bren light machine gun, Sten submachine gun, two inch mortar, Piet, Webley service pistol, Mills bomb, plastic bases, semi leaflet, and fully color water slide decals. Now, these ones are actually for the uh, 3rd Infantry um, Division, but they're also the Canadian divisions as well, so there's a good, uh, good op options on there as well. Um, the painting on here is for the Vallejo model ca uh, color English uniform, Russian uniform, khaki, uh, German camo beige, uh, green grey, and black. Now, um, the main differences between uh, both both Canadian and British forces wore battle dress. Okay, as you can see in the picture on here, so you've got the British British ones here, and they're sort of like a, a brownish um, battle dress, whereas the Canadian ones here are more on the greener side. Um, and and actually, they uh, their battle dress was actually of a better uh, quality than the British one. And a lot of uh, veterans afterwards, certainly after the war, uh, managed to get that kept a hold of um, any Canadian battle dress they had as their going out dress or their posh dress. Uh, because it was uh, it was that it, it was a lot better in quality. Now, talking of quality, let's have a look at uh, inside and see what uh, uh, what these new sprues look like. My intention um, later on is to so my, probably my next video or two is to go into um, um, sort of. Have a look at the different color schemes that made up the sort of the uniforms, the webbing, the rifles, and everything else. Um, and I've got a lot of um, books on the actual subject, but I've actually got a lot of the actual uniform webbing. Uh, I've even got the number four and sten guns as well. The actual um, these ones are all uh, deact, but um, I'll show you because there's lots of interest in them. So open up the box. So. I'll put the box to the one side at the moment and let's see what we've got. So it's um, we've got a little bit of a um, help guide saying what you need to do before you uh, begin. Again, uh, another guide on how to actually paint the British infantryman. Um, and suggested paints either using Valerio um, Army Painter or the Panzer Races, uh, different types of paint, and that's also for the Canadian one I repeated here as well. A um, little of information about the uh, the Bren gun, the uh, two-inch mortar, uh, and actually, uh, well, I know they've got a figure representing uh, the um, either Scottish or Scots Canadian regiments with the Thomas Shanter, but we'll have a look at those later on. And on the other side, it's the it's the, their guide to actually what all the parts are. So um, let's have a quick look at what they actually said. So we've got Tama Shanters, um, heads, uh, Mark One, Mark Two steel helmet, Mark Three assault helmet, which is very very useful. Mark Three assault helmet with scrim cover, and then you've got Mark One, Mark Two scrim helmet with scrim cover as well. Mark Three assault helmet with neck cover. Now the assault helmets, uh, they came out sort of um, more or less from the D-Day landings onwards and so the actual assault regiments actually were issued with these new um, assault helmets which are slightly different to the normal Tommy helmets and sort of the, um, but um, hopefully um, if I can't show on this I'll show you on one of my later, later um, videos where I've actually got one of the assault helmets in, in the attic. Um, 
So then we go on to Stengen firing small pack of pickaxe, arm carrying rifle, Bren right, Bren gun left arm, Bren, Bren gun bipod, Bren gun accessories pack. So um, let's have a, um, there is lots of options on here. And I know that from reading the blurb that they've, I think they've actually worked out how many different options they are, but uh, I don't know have that with me at the moment. So uh, we'll find that out. And then so the the guide. So you've got the the Thomas Shanter heads there got, uh, for the Scottish regiment, uh, normal heads, and then you've got the different types of helmets. Uh, one thing I have noticed on this as well, for the big difference from the previous um, inf British infantry set is the actual arms and rifles are connected, which is which is good. Um, and you do, it means you don't have to faff around of trying to find the right arm for the right right um right weapon um but it's um but it, again it slowly can use the previous ones for uh kit bashing or um sort of uh, make you know making different uh, poses um but we'll have a look at these anyway so i've actually seen some quite some very good um items on there as well so we've got the um it looks like the piet uh, piet uh, um, carrier um shell carrier um, and also you've got sort of the mortar round carrier as well, very similar and um, just a little bit wider for some of them. And then you've got the up here, you've got the spares bag for the Brengen carrier, uh, uh, Brengen carrier, uh, Brengen. Uh, what else we've got on here? Though? So that's the uh, the backpack with the the pick on it, and also the uh, the, the typical um, oh, so tin mug. Um, I've seen a lot of things about tin mugs in in the past. In the past, yeah, tin mugs came in. Um, they were issued to soldiers, and they had a tendency of sticking them on the back of the backpacks. Um, the ones I've got, I've got a a brown one uh, that was issued, a very brownish red one, but I've also got um, your um, a sort of your, your typical white one as well. So it's there's three different ones that were issued depending on when they were issued during the during the war. And again, if the uh, servicemen lost their uh, you know, lost their mug, I'm sure they would be very good at um, finding a, 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 um, a replacement. Um, again, you've got the different types of uh, webbing on here, so it's the short, uh, the small packs, uh, and also you've got the it looks like the lightweight um, respirator pouch as well, um, and then you've got the bandolier uh, and the Stengen um, bandolier as well. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the sculpts. So, yep, lots of bases. So let's get rid of the bases first. More bases, and uh, here we are for the. Um, so this is the decal. So, uh, like I said, you've got this is the Canadian one. Um, you, um, so you've got these. Probably this is the Winnipeg's, um, and then so. Sort of the, the main difference is that they actually had a, um, a a badge at the top of their battle dress that actually said Canada, and then so they have they would have their reg, um, so their regimentals sort of uh, shoulder title as well. You've got the rank on there, and you've got for uh, the uh, the medics, but you've also got the MPs as well. So the Corps of Military Police, the Canadians had their own. Uh, military Corps of Military Police as well as as well as the the, the British. Um, oh, this is packed by Anna. So uh, hello, Anna. And then on this is this is the British one. So um, again, um, this is the. I need to actually have a look at uh, have a look at so which regiment they're representing as Third Inf Infantry Division. And then depending, so if you've got the, the the actual triangle is the 3rd Infantry Division badge, and then you've got the actual uh, stripes underneath. Now they donate whether it's the, within that division, they was broke up into brigades, and then within the brigades you had uh, junior and senior uh, regiments. And depending on how many of these stripes you had, meant whether you were either in the, the senior or the junior uh, infantry battalion within that, um, that area. Um, so I will look into that, and then sort of uh, probably on my next video or two, we'll uh, 
we'll put a bit more information on there as well because it's quite handy to actually know uh, a bit about the units that you're painting um, and think you actually enjoy the game a little bit more if you know what the actual um, um, what the regiments did where they fought um, again so where I live it's uh, mostly sort of Wiltshire regiment and the Wiltshire regiment were part of the so you had the, the regular battalions but you also had your territorial battalions that ca called up for the Second World War as well so around here you had the fourth and fifth um, Wiltshire Battalion and they were part of the 43rd Wessex Division so there's lots of uh, campaigns so certainly within um, I know that as soon as they arrived in the Normandy beaches um, they were thrown into uh, more or less straight away into Hill 112 so you've got uh, they were very good tra you know highly trained troops but they hadn't been blooded as such and uh, they were thrown in against SS um, in a lot there's so there's a lot of options uh, out there for doing different scenarios some of them will be mentioned in these sort of uh, the warlord books but uh, as i find if you have a look into the different battles and you know don't concentrate on the big ones look at the small ones either side of it and so sort of, that gave you lots of more scenarios uh, to, to come up with um, right so let's be waffling on let's have a look at the actual figures so again the sprues are very very good um your typical sort of uh, warlord games um product very very good the sculpt sculpts are very very crisp let's see if i can get a zoom in there as well so everything on the infantryman where they're aware where, where they were where they are wearing the webbing you've got your 38 pattern webbing you've got your front and uh, two front pouches you've got your waterboard pouch, pouch at the back with the skeleton uh, web carrier and then on, on the back you've got your um she folding shovel and then you've got she the actual sort of pouch where the actual blade or the folding shovel goes um and then you've got so the, the the webbing straps over the back yeah so again this is that seems to be the standard fit with um all of them as well um the, um, I'm just having a look. So the, one thing I have noticed is a lot of the rifles seem to have the actual spike bayonets already fitted. Now, mm, okay, that that's that, that's okay, but it's to say it's it's um, I would prefer with some of them to be um, not on there. But uh, that's something I can or you can actually either with a sharp scalpel knife take them off. But uh, it, that's up to you. But I think it might be something that. Uh, might be prone to breaking in the long run so uh, but other than that very very good very very good so these are the lee enfield number no. four rifle which was uh, the predominant battle rifle of world war ii um even though it's of it was meant there to replace the smle the uh, the smle carried on well after the uh, the war finished so it's um up here so we've got uh, it looks like a mark one mark two helmet with no uh, cam i'm sorry talking up here so yeah not mark one helmet you've got webley you've got the the bandoliers so the additional ammunition bandoliers you've got your bring uh, your stenger magazine and then you've got the uh, the ad additional 38 pattern pouches now the reason why the, if they've probably uh, they've left these additional ones in is that with some of the uh, with the number two um with the on the st uh, on the bring gun is that um, they had auxiliary pouches that were uh, strapped around the neck so they actually the actual these additional 30 pouch 38 pattern pouches sat sort of above here or on a strap that went around the neck and that so that that meant that the actual number two um, not only did he carry the um, the brain gun sort of spare gun pouch this here with the spare barrels in it as well he actually carried um, extra ammunition or extra am the magazine in fact everybody in the section would have carried extra magazines for the Bren gun because the Bren gun was probably where the most of the firepower for the section came from so you know if you don't get uh, the um, if that Bren gun doesn't have the ammunition it needs um, you're in a bit of stuck but also as well the fact that the the SMLE plus the Lee Enfield number four 
part of the 303 round. So if you were running out short of ammunition, uh, you would t use the rounds from the 303 rifle to um, fill up your, your bring gun magazines. And then, so the, the I'm just having a look at the Sten gun on here as well. So the Sten gun, you have got. Well, this is the Mark II version. So this is the Mark II version. So there was a um, a, um, a later Mark III version where it had an enclosed barrel, and these ones look like Mark IIs. So Mark IIs. Yeah, they're all they're all Mark IIs. So what I'll do is I'll have a look on the actual um, other sprues just to see if, see if there's any differences or or it's possibly that all, all the um, everything actually on the sprues is the same for um, each, each one. So what else we've got? So we've got the um, you've got your small packs. So uh, some with the ponchos, some with the tin mugs, and um, and then you've got the lightweight um, the the lightweight um, Oh, respirator pouch, your uh, shovel, map case, and then you got your arms here. So you got uh, binos arms. That's your number two, um, number two, uh, two inch mortar, uh, and then your two inch mortar uh, bomb carrier. Looks like an officer map case. Um, Mills Mills bombs, and then you've got the arms. So they got the matching arms for the weapons, and then you've got your matching arms for the Sten gun. Um, again, so you've got um, a chappie that's got the, so, so this is the piet. Um, it looks like he's actually carrying the piet rather than facing backwards, rather than facing forward. So um, we'll have a look at how previous kits arms fit onto these ones, because then we might be able to put a piet or reuse um, kit bash piets uh, facing the other way rather than just being carried. Um, we'll see what it is. And then you've got sort of the um, the piet uh, sort of ammunition carrier as well, which which you could use as a three-inch mortar carrier as well. It's very similar in size. So Tommy's Tommy's bodies, and then you've got a kneeling one, and then you've got web uh, web pistol with the actual um, ammunition pouch on the top of it. Again, nice cr uh, clean uh, casts casts. Uh, sculpts on these, uh, just a little bit of uh, flash, but nothing that uh, can't be taken over with the edge of a scalpel or something like that. And then what we've got down here, so my favourite, the Beringen. Um You've got the the pick, and then you've, this one actually looks like it's um, a magazine off a sten gun. So uh, yeah, okay. And then you've got another arm with a sten gun, um, large pack, cup, and and um, the pickaxe. Now, this is what I was on about the. So let's see if we can see it. So this one here. So this this one here is your. Ah, hang on, no, hang on. Let's have a look. Right. So this one here is your normal Tommy helmet, Mark One, Mark Two Tommy helmet. So you see the shape of it? It's just like a like a spot, so to so to speak. Now over here, if you can see there. That is the that is the assault helmet. So it's very similar to the Mark One, Mark Two. However, it's sort of like at the back of it, it sort of um, it, it bends bends down, so it's more protection on the neck. Um, and then you've got the different variants on here. So you've got ones without uh, with uh, assault helmets, and number ones both with and without uh, scrim or just the, just with a net. So these ones are designed to fit on the heads as well. So uh, okay, that's good. And then you've got the um, so the Scottish TOS Thomas Shanters, which you can use for British or Canadian uh, Scottish regiments. Again, they're very very good. And then you've got your your your, your basic heads. You know, so sort of everybody grimacing and shouting and you know oh and. You can't get away the, uh, the 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 chappy wearing glasses, and you can't get away with the chappy having a cigarette. Um, what I would like was actually a, a, a somebody actually smoking a pipe, because if um, uh, <laughs> everybody seems to be smoking over there, whether it's pipes or cigarettes. In fact, actually, I don't know if you know, but actually part of their ten-man ration pack was actually a tin of um, a, of hundred cigarettes, 
so that uh, could be shared out. So those who didn't smoke kept their kept their um, cigarettes and swapped them later on with, uh, um, with uh, for, for those who had the uh, surplus bars of chocolate. Right. Okay. So um, I'm well impressed with these. And so yeah. So the next next my next one on the list would be. Um, so I'd like to take them off the sprue, start getting the models together, and uh, and then sort of have a look at uh, painting them. So let me just double check, just to make sure that the um, all the sprues are all the same. But uh, uh, and uh, yeah, they're looking like they're all the same. Okay. Yeah, what it, what it would have been nice is a mixture of Mark II's and probably Mark um, Mark, II, uh, Mark II's and Mark III stink guns. I know the Mark III's was sort of um, came out later on, but in case of they would have been a nice uh, a nice mix. And I know that a lot of you actually out there have the 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 Mark V already, which was issued to the paratroopers. So if you've got the bolt action um, power, British paratrooper sprues, then uh, you've got the uh, Mark Fives on there as well. So the one thing I was really, really interested in is is that um, not only do I do sort of Northwest Europe, um, sort of like D-Day all the way up until the end of the war. And again, that's a sort of a period that people should have a, have a look at is, you know, what actually happened after Normandy, because there was so many different battles you know but uh, both british and canadian all the way up until the end of the war you know so the the, the germans didn't get it didn't, didn't give up and um yeah and so it's um, again it's something else to to research uh, and that will give you more options for scenarios uh, and uh, you know your big battles um so um this definitely gets a thumbs up for me this is a a um a vast improvement um, in production and quality over the last ones, I think, uh, in my own personal view. And I am I would dub be double checking to actually see if uh, a lot of the actual arms and everything, the weapons, will from the old kits will fit onto on, onto these. I hope they will, um, because this gives me options for post-war as well. So uh, possibly Korea. Um, and other conflicts so um, yes this gives us lots more options and uh, well done warlord games so this gives us a big big thumbs up for me and hopefully this is um, whetted your appetite for uh, this new British and Canadian Army infantry box set like I said 30 hard plastic 28 millimeter World War II British infantry and they do mean hard plastic this is none of your, your bendy stuff and uh, yeah okay so if you like what i've done don't forget to uh, like and subscribe below uh, be much appreciated leave any comments and and well i'll catch you next time so thanks for your time much appreciated take care bye now